How would it be like to live in Mars? Have you ever imagined yourself living outside the Earth? Probably not. Because it's not in a sustainable to live on any other planet other than Earth right now. But in near future, there is a slight possibility of you living on Mars. If not you, then your grandchildren's maybe. Who knows? Welcome back to Thought Control and today we are going to discuss what would it be like right now if you lived on Mars. How far do you think Mars is from Earth? 56 million kilometers away and even if you go by the fastest aircraft, it will take around 40 days to 9 and a half months depending on the position of planet. And when you step out of the spacecraft, all you will see in dry, barren, lifeless land with no life at all. The planet Mars have very low atmospheric pressure and because of which you need to live in buildings and walk around in pressure suits. No shopping required at all. One good news for you is that you don't have to lose your weight anymore as gravity on Mars is 38% lower than that of Earth. Mars is typically more colder than Earth and hence you should get used to seeing ice everywhere. Hate baths? Another good news. Forget all about those leisurely long baths due to scarcity of water. The dust storms that are rarely experienced by you on Earth would be a regular thing on Mars. The only profitable business to run on Mars would be that of sunscreen makers. The extremely thin atmosphere on Mars does not absorb the ultraviolet rays. With no rain and clouds on Mars, it's better that you forget about rainbows and beautiful sunsets. There will be no insects on Mars. No more mosquitoes, thankfully. But life cannot exist on Earth without insects and because of this life cannot exist in Mars. The first life to get affected from absence of insects would be plant life. Most plants are angiosperms which means flowering plants and without insects pollinating plants won't happen and plant life will gradually disappear. Birds and mammals who feed on plants will also disappear like frogs and birds and then the animals who eat them for food will also die soon enough. Insects work as a decomposer of dead bodies and without them, it will take a lot of time to get rid of them. Like Earth, because of tilt of the planet on its axis, Mars have seasons. But it also have secondary seasonal influence due to its extremely elliptical orbit. When the Earth is furthest from it, the southern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun, resulting in much colder winters than those in the northern hemisphere. If you were to live in the northern hemisphere, you would enjoy 7 months of spring, 6 months of summer, 5 months of autumn and just 4 months of winter. The normal temperature on Mars is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. However, temperature can go from 195 Fahrenheit in winters close to the poles of 68 Fahrenheit during summers close to the equator. The temperatures can likewise change significantly just in a week. The Martian night with these clear skies is full of stars. Amateur astronomers would like to look out for the moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos that can be released at the same time. Both satellites which are both much smaller than the Earth's moon partially are also capable of partially eclipsing the sun during the day. The daytime sky for the most part has an orange color to it. Amateur astronomers would like to look out for the moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos that can be released at the same time. Both satellites, which are much smaller than the Earth's moon, are also capable of partially eclipsing the sun during the day. The daytime sky for the most part has an orange color to it in a view of all the residue. Dawn and dusk seem to be like those on Earth during a cloudy day. Then again, actually the region around the sun is blue. The surface of Mars provides a couple of fantastic sightseeing opportunities. There are definitely areas that would become national parks if we were to fully colonize Mars. The largest volcano in the solar system is Olympus Mons which rises 16 miles above its surrounding plains. On the other hand is a giant valley system about the size from New York to Los Angeles. And you would probably still want to visit the Viking landers 
and the massive polar ice caps of Mars that often get dry ice snowfall. Humanity could make patches of the red planet habitable relatively cheaply and efficiently by placing thin layer of silicia aerogel on or above the Martian surface. The new study suggests the insulating aerogel would warm the ground enough to melt water ice and would also block harmful ultraviolet radiation, potentially creating an environment where plants and other photosynthetic life could flourish. The Martian surface was eminently habitable in the ancient past, featuring lakes, rivers, and even a huge ocean. But things changed dramatically after the planet lost its global magnetic field about 4 billion years ago. Charged particles from the sun began stripping away, eventually reducing it to thin silver that cannot keep much heat in or ultraviolet radiation out. The surface became extremely cold and dry as a result, leaving subterranean aquifers as perhaps the only potential abodes for Earth-like life. Is living on Mars what you would like to try or preserve the Earth that we have now? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any feedback, please let us know in the comment section below. If you want to do, enjoy your life. Knowledge is everything. Everything is knowledge. Haan, chalo bhai.